So thank you, thanks. Are there any mathematicians in the audience just before I start saying anything? Four, <laughs> great, thanks. So I, I am based at University College London and, uh, and that's the topic of my talk. So it's about a citizen science project involving computation and cognition. So this is an extremely preliminary type of project which we are just starting. So I'm essentially here to make friends. So thanks a lot for the invitation and hopefully to get some help from the audience, ideas and uh, advices. So let me tell you, here is a story that I have to, that I have to tell you about. And uh, I hope it will be a easy story to, to, to tell. But let me start with the, the beginning. What are computational problems? So any kind of problem that you can feed to a computer and the computer tells you yes or no is a computational problem. So here is one. Is two plus two equal four? You feed it to a computer, the computer hopefully will say yes. That's a computational problem. Now, there is wide belief uh, that all problems out there can be classified into two families. So this is non-trivial somehow. And <laughs> so there are easy problems and hard problems. <laughs> so the point is that how do you tell whether a problem is easy and whether a problem is hard? A problem is easy if, it's, if it can be solved quickly. A problem is hard if it takes long time to solve. Now one should say precisely that the time that takes to solve the problem depends on the length of the input. I will skip this entirely, just take that easy problems are solved quickly, hard problems are solved slowly. Maybe it takes the age of the universe even to solve them. So here is an example of an easy problem. Take lots of letters, put them on the table, and you want to order them in alphabetical order. Not, not a big deal. You can do that easily. Here is an example of a hard problem. I give you a list of cities, some cities, and I ask you what's the shortest route between the cities. That's very, very tricky. And uh, in some sense, hard problems, like, like this one here, are important and unavoidable. Important for a number of reasons. For example, for information security. Because uh, if we want to, um, to uh, transfer information somehow safely, we have to rely on the fact that there are some very hard problems to solve that keep our information safe somehow. But uh, hard problems are unavoidable because they appear in science a little bit everywhere. This is just now some sketchy uh, uh, picture of some protein. If you want to predict the behavior of proteins, you need to solve some hard problems. So now this is yet an interesting step forward, which is uh, not every problem that is hard is always hard. <laughs> so meaning not every instance of hard problem is hard. In fact, here is some diagram. These dots are just um, instances of the same problem, hard problem. And somehow there are some parameters out there that tell us how intractable hard problem is. So the problem is hard. We know that it's difficult. But there will be some special instances maybe that are easier. And maybe there is some parameter that tell us how difficult this problem can be, uh, or actually um, how intractable this problem can be. And parameterizing the complexity of problems is fundamental. It's fundamental in mathematics because it helps us to classify different mathematical objects. And fundamental in practice because uh, in scheduling, planning, that's something that we have to deal with on a daily basis. OK, so what about cognitive complexity parameters? And here I will do the following, which is a little bit paradoxical. I want to replace a computer with a human being. Now you say, OK, we had human beings doing computation for, I guess, a few thousand years. Then <laughs> recently we got computers. What do you want to do? You want to replace now computers with human beings? No. So <laughs> I just want to use human beings for a specific task. So this is me, so a few weeks ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And uh, I feed it to the human being the same type of question, right? Two plus two equals four. Hopefully, the, the human being will tell yes. Now, observation. When we program a computer to solve a problem, we, we think, in some sense, like a computer, because we have to implement what we call an algorithm. So a, a procedure on the computer 
mm, and we have to talk in some way to the computer to tell what to do. But sometimes for certain tasks, uh, we use, uh, well, not for certain tasks, for all the tasks, <laughs> we use our brain to solve the problem, and we often just solve the problem, some cognitive task, for example. And here there is some caveat, of course, that if you want to uh, define computational complexity, for computers is very well defined. For human beings, it's a bit fuzzy because what does it mean that probably it's easy or hard for a person to solve? Well, we can play with this uh, idea and propose the folly. Does it make sense to define cognitive computational complexity parameters and compare those with standard computational complexity parameters? Um, so possibly until not long ago, this was absolutely unthinkable. Today, we have the power of the crowd. So it's plausible that through some citizen science project, in particular crowd crafting, we can get a certain amount of data, and this amount of data is useful to tell how difficult it is for human beings to solve certain problems and to see whether we can actually define some mathematical parameter that can be compared with mathematical parameters that are already out there to solve these problems with computers. How do we do that? Yes, we just somehow have to find a way which is um, interesting, maybe fun. So we try to, to play some mathematical games. Now, is this completely uh, strange? Uh, okay, maybe not, not entirely because uh, I guess we all have seen the Sudoku and there are millions of people that play Sudoku. There are even competitions. Some days ago I was reading in the news that if you play Sudoku too much, you get fat. But apparently if you are at a competition of Sudoku, you need, you know, to be very much uh, in shape. So uh, this to say that people like to play mathematical games and maybe we can propose to people some interesting type of game. So what game should we play to start with? So to propose some type of of parameterized cognitive computational complexity. We start to think about uh, games that are very easy to describe and that involve graphs. So what is a graph? It's just an object made by some, some points that are called nodes and they are connected in some way. This is a graph, there are lots of graphs out there. Take Facebook, like a slice of Facebook, it's a graph. Take this beautiful picture of a slice of the human brain, it's a graph take this not so beautiful picture of a piece of the London Underground, it's a graph. So there are lots of graphs out there, very easy to define what a graph is. Mm, we can construct lots of graphs very easily and the mathematical theory of graphs is immense. Hundreds of books. So what we can do with that? We can try to propose a problem which is easy to describe, but possibly not so easy to solve. And actually we don't even know how easy it is to solve mathematically because this problem has unknown computational complexity. So what is this problem? This is somehow the first problem that I would propose, but there may be other problems that are interesting. Isomorphism testing. This is a picture of two graphs. I would like to superimpose them to check if they're exactly the same graph. So I start to deform one, and I want to put it on top of the other one to check whether they're actually the same. I guess you can already see that indeed they are the same, right? So I can just match the vertices and when I reach this point you can see that it's easy right just I swap these two vertices and these two graphs are exactly the same so indeed mathematically we say they are isomorphic I can superimpose them perfectly so what is this game good for as I was saying this type of problem which is called isomorphism testing is interesting because it has unclear computational complexity so from the mathematical point of view is a bit of a fishy business so Letting people play this game could popularize real mathematical questions and engage the players. You may end up to define some complexity parameters for graphs that are useful. Um, the game is very easy to describe. And there are lots of other games that we could play with graphs. For example, color inverts of a graph in some specific way. And here it's the game, actually, that we, here is a player. Uh, I tried to embed the video on the presentation, but I failed. So I have to show you the game via the internet. So here is our game, which I like to call Mysomorph, but the name could be changed today. Uh, <laughs> so here are two graphs and cute objects. 
sorry. So here is some information about the graphs, if you like. So you can learn something. And, uh, and then you can play the game. So you can start matching the vertices of this graph on the vertices of the other one. Mm, I matched one edge. And I think that it will take me a while to solve this. <laughs> so yes. So what do we need to do? So the data collected could be used to define a new graph parameter. For example, graphs for which the game takes longer may, co may consider it more complex. We could reward the players in some way. Of course, we have to be sure that players play the game so they don't watch TV while they play the game. So we want to have some time and you can get some uh, mark according, some points according to how long it takes. Shorter it takes, higher is the points. This can be done certainly on all sorts of platforms. And of course, this would be interesting only if there is a large number of players because then you can take averages and you can actually see the, uh, the value of the data. So I guess this is all my talk. And as I was saying, this is a very, very much preliminary project. And I would be very happy to talk to people interested in this. Thank you.